By the mid-1990s, RPGs had totally taken off on the Super Famicom. Squaresoft and Enix especially churned out a multitude of fantastic games that captivated a growing base of fans. The RPG boom also succeeded in drawing new developers and publishers into the genre to recreate the same successes. Among them was Wolf Team and Namco, which brought Tales of Fantasia to the Japanese market in 1995. Like many RPGs I cover on my channel, English-speaking audiences will be pleased to know that Tales of Fantasia has a complete English translation. In fact, it actually has multiple English translations by several different translation teams. One of the only RPGs I know of where this is the case. The one I originally played back in the day was DJAP's 2001 translation, so that's the one I'm most familiar with. Either way, I'll include a link in the description to all of them in a central location so you can check them out. As far as the story goes, you play as the main protagonist, Kles, a young swordsman from the village of Toltus and son of Miguel Albane, instructor at the local sword fighting school. While hunting with his friend Chester, Kles experiences a mysterious vision of a woman who tells him to protect the tree in front of him. Upon his return to Toltus, he finds the town destroyed, he stumbles upon his father's dead corpse, and his mother's last words indicate that the village was attacked by villains searching for the family's pendant. After telling him to venture to Euclid, she dies also. When he arrives though, he finds that he's been betrayed by his uncle, who was threatened by the Dark Knight Mars, and is thrown into jail. The pendant his mother carried is taken from him, but he doesn't realize its importance at the moment. He eventually escapes with the help of a healer named Mint, and the group resolves to overcome the tragedy and stop the spread of evil. As they discover, Kles's father was one of four legendary figures that sealed away Deos, a demon king, and the pennant holds the key to keeping him sealed away. In terms of RPG storylines, it's a pretty standard affair, filled with cliches and character archetypes that will seem really familiar. The main story concept shows some imagination, but I also think it seems a bit reminiscent of Final Fantasy V's. You know, the whole Four Warriors of Dawn sealing X-Death in the past and all. Tales of Fantasia's combat takes place on a 2D battlefield, where each of your characters can actually move left and right in a live setting. Unlike almost every other RPG, attacking the enemy involves actually moving toward them and using the attack button. If enemies are in the air, your character will actually do a jump attack to strike them. Special attacks can also be used, and you gain them progressively as you level. Each of them has special characteristics, like the ability to teleport from one side of the screen to another and hit the enemy. Other attacks, like Blade Storm, allow you to deal multiple hits to a single enemy. Some of them are very strong against multiple enemies in a single line, like Lionheart. There's some good variety in the attacks that keeps the gameplay and battles from becoming too stale. That's probably one of the best aspects of the title. There is one notable downside to battles in Tales of Fantasia, though. At all times you aren't controlling a character, AI takes over for the others. And honestly, this system is my biggest gripe about the game. You can control AI settings of the characters to a point, but overall, the AI simply isn't smart enough to use magic the way you want it to be used most of the time. It's so bad at times, actually, that your other three characters often just sit there on the field doing nothing at all. You can always toggle to the other characters to control each of their actions directly, but this ends up taking a lot of time, and I just didn't have fun with that level of micromanagement. I also really think the game could have benefited from having more than a single melee character for balance sake. Graphically, Tales of Fantasia is brilliant, and definitely pushed the system to its visual limits. This was aided greatly by the title's gigantic 48 megabit cartridge, one of only two games on the system with a size that big. The character sprites are vibrant, and for the time, there's some real impressive environmental effects like ripples in the water. The overworld also looks fantastic, possibly better than any other game on the system. It's a definite graphical treat that blows almost every other SNES game away. If you've played Tales of Fantasia, you might find it similar to Star Ocean, another RPG originally released in Japan only. And by similar, I mean really, really, really similar. I mean the menu system, music, sprites, artwork, and action-oriented combat are strikingly comparable. This is because Tales of Fantasia was created by Wolf Team, 
a developer that got bogged down in numerous creative disputes with Namco over the game's content. These quarrels resulted in much of Wolf Team leaving the company to form Triace, the company that created Star Ocean. Tales of Fantasia was eventually re-released for the PlayStation, but only in Japan. Both versions are extremely similar besides some minor graphical and sound modifications, so don't stress too much about which version to play. The PlayStation version does include some updated audio, a new animated intro, and some other things, but I still think the translated SNES version is great, and you don't lose out on much by playing it. I've also recently learned the game was ported to the Game Boy Advance, PSP, and iOS, but I've never played those versions, so I can't really weigh in on their merits. In the end, I don't think Tales of Fantasia is quite as good as its spiritual successor, Star Ocean, but it's still admirable in its own right. And honestly, if you like the one, you're bound to like the other. Even though it features some very cliche themes, it's graphically brilliant and keeps its players on their toes more than most games in the genre. It's really classic RPG greatness at its best, and its unique action-oriented combat combined the fighting and RPG genres together in a way that had never really been done before. This was the start of what would become a great RPG franchise, the Tales series, which now features an enormous array of 17 games over several generations of consoles. This makes it one of the biggest RPG series in history, and here's where it all started. If you liked this review and remember Tales of Fantasia, leave a comment below about the most memorable aspect of the game to you. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell below to be alerted upon the addition of new ones. Also, please join my Discord community linked in the description and consider supporting my channel via YouTube's Join feature to receive member exclusives, such as advanced videos and complete video transcripts.